Good morning and welcome to worship. This morning we'd like to celebrate with the following who are having birthdays this coming week. Paul Anderson, Del Dalsgaard, Rob Hansen, Ron Kettner, Lucas Milbrath, Easton Jensen, Blaine Anderson, Ian Nelson, Janelle Tews, Julie Smith, not me, Jordan Menage. Following are having anniversaries this week as well, Nick and Brenda Anderson, Dan and Stephanie Friesner, and Steve and Diane Lepetsky. If you have an opportunity, I invite you uh, to give them a call or send them a message wishing them a happy birthday or a happy anniversary. Uh, our only other announcements this week are a reminder, we will have our Bible study on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. If you are interested in participating in uh, the Bible study, please send me an email or a message on Facebook or however you get in touch with me and I will uh, send you a link to the meeting room. We will also have our um, story time for uh, elementary Sunday school kids. That's Tuesday at 4 p.m. And then um, our youth group gathering, that's Tuesday at 7 p.m. And confirmation will meet on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Uh, so Tuesday and Wednesday, um, we have a variety of options for, um, for the members of our congregation to gather at least virtually uh, and spend some time together. Our service begins with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. By the authority Christ has given to all the baptized, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Living God. Jesus gives himself to us in the breaking of the bread. May our hearts burn within us and our eyes be opened to his presence among us and for us through his redeeming work. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our psalm this morning is Psalm 116, verses 1 through 14, and we will read the psalm in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. Pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he 
he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, 24th chapter. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. But when he, was at, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered there. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. That one sentence certainly captures the heart of the matter. We had hoped. The hoping is over. It's a thing of the past. Hoping had defined their time with Jesus. It was their constant companion. And now that hope is gone. On the evening of Easter day, 
These two disciples were making their sad journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus, their hopes dashed. Everything they had imagined Jesus was going to do, everything they thought he was going to be, was gone, just like that. And their hopes had been pretty high. They hadn't just hoped that Jesus would do a miracle for them. They hadn't just hoped that he would teach them a lot of interesting things. They hadn't just hoped that he would feed them from time to time. They had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. They had hoped he was the Messiah. But now it was clear to them that their hope had been in vain. Jesus wasn't going to do what they had hoped. He couldn't do what they had hoped because he was dead. And this was the source of their sadness as they walked the lonely road to Emmaus. This is what they were talking about with one another. This is what they were trying to process, trying to figure out. And now perhaps it was time to make some alternate plans. Perhaps that's what this trip to Emmaus was all about. After all, there was no point in remaining in Jerusalem with the rest of the disciples because this ride was over. So perhaps they were going home. Or maybe they had heard about another teacher who might be the one they were hoping for. Whatever their plan was, it clearly didn't involve clinging to those misguided hopes that had now become hopeless. And then Jesus showed up on the road with them and asked them what was on their minds. And really the exchange between them is almost comical. Jesus asks them what they're talking about. What's the news of the day? as if he doesn't know. And they, of course, can't believe that he doesn't already know. He must have heard the news. Everyone's heard the news. It's all anyone was talking about. Jesus just says, well, what news? What's everyone talking about? Fill me in. And so in a truly remarkable and kind of strange scene, these two disciples tell Jesus his own story. And the story they tell reveals almost as much about them as it does about Jesus. First off, Jesus was a prophet. He had preached powerful sermons and done powerful deeds, and everyone was impressed. But then the chief priests and the leaders got upset with him and turned him over to be crucified. Now, our two disciples conveniently leave out that the crowds that had been so impressed with him quickly turned on Jesus, and even more conveniently leave out that all of his disciples had abandoned him. They had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel, but when danger came, they took off running. And then we get what's really, I think, the most troubling part of the story. Because these two disciples had already heard the report from early that morning. They had already heard that the tomb was empty. They had heard that messengers from God had told the women that Jesus was alive just as he had said he would be. And still, in spite of this news, our two disciples are walking away from Jerusalem away from the rest of Jesus' followers, away from where he had said they would find him. And whatever hope they had, they now speak of in the past tense. And it's this little bit of news that really provokes Jesus. He immediately calls out their foolishness, their faithlessness calls out how slow of heart they are to believe, and then he teaches the whole of scripture to them, but in a new way. He reveals to them how scripture points to him, to his suffering, to his death, to his mercy, to his victory. 
Now, clearly, it was an interesting Bible study for these two disciples, and they wanted it to keep going. So when they arrived at their destination, they begged Jesus to stay with them. They don't want this conversation to end. But in all of this time, through all of this teaching, they still have no idea that it's Jesus who is walking with them. Their eyes remain clouded because their hope was over, strictly behind them in the past. But then in the breaking of the bread, their eyes are opened. They can finally see that this one who had been walking with them, this one who had been questioning them, teaching them, and now eating with them, is the Lord. But then as soon as they recognize him, he's gone because he had other places to be. He'd shown up to open their eyes to the truth, to restore their hope, and then he moved on. Now, our two disciples try to tell themselves that they had been suspicious all along. Their hearts had burned within them while he was teaching them. There was something kind of familiar about him. But if they had actually been suspicious that they were talking with Jesus that whole time, they sure did an awfully good job of concealing that fact. But now that they knew, now that they had seen, they knew where they had to be. And even though it was already evening, they raced back to Jerusalem to join the other disciples to report what they had seen. And upon their arrival, they learned that they weren't the only ones who had seen Jesus. Besides the experience of the women at the tomb, Peter had also run into the Lord. And now finally, there's a glimmer of hope for these followers of Jesus. Where only despair had been imaginable a few hours before, something new was taking root. Hope is a powerful thing, and losing it is just as powerful. Hope had sustained those disciples through all kinds of strange and confusing experiences with Jesus. It had kept them going when they were maybe tempted to head back to their fishing nets or tax booths or whatever they had left behind. But when that hope wasn't realized in the way they thought it would be, well, that was a crushing blow. The problem was that their hope had been garbled from the beginning. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. They certainly were hoping in the right one, but they were hoping for so much less than he had come to accomplish. They hoped he would redeem Israel when he had come to redeem the world. They had hoped he would fulfill their wildest dreams when he had come to fulfill the will of God. In these past weeks, even these past days, we've seen a lot of hopes crushed. A bunch of young people were hoping to go to prom last night. We're hoping that there would be baseball and softball and track and golf seasons. We're hoping things would be back to normal in time for graduation and those hopes weren't realized. I was talking with my nephew yesterday and I wondered aloud whether there would be a football season in the fall. And he responded that if he can't play football, he has no purpose. Now that seemed a little dramatic to me, but it's probably not so far off from how a lot of people are feeling right now. What if he were 20 years older and had said, if I'm not a successful farmer, I have no purpose. Or if I'm a teacher, but I never get to see my students, I have no purpose. Or if he were 40 years older and had said, if I can't spend holidays with my grandchildren, I have no purpose. Or if I have to try to find a different job, my life is a failure. Or what if he were 60 years older and had said, if I can't afford to retire, what is the point of going on? 
I probably would not have been so quick to dismiss his statements as overly dramatic. Because though our priorities change over time, we hope for those things that most feed our sense of who we are. And our hopes might often look a little strange to those who don't share our priorities. So some of us may say, we had hoped that this would be the year the ag markets rebounded. And now we can find no place to sell what we've raised. We had hoped our nest egg would carry us through retirement and now we're watching it disappear. We had hoped for our dream wedding and now we're trying to pare the list down from 500 to 50 guests or possibly even 10. We had hoped for a birthday party with all our friends and instead we got a cake and FaceTime with the grandparents. We had hoped for a championship season. We had hoped for prom. We had hoped, we had hoped, we had hoped. We had hoped for things that are crucially important to us. Others might not understand them, might, not, might even mock us for them, but these hopes matter to us. They're big for us. And perhaps we even have some sense that Jesus is part of those hopes. We had hoped that he would bring to fulfillment all these things that are so important to us. Perhaps we had even prayed that he would bring them to fulfillment. Those two disciples had hoped Jesus would redeem Israel. And that's no small thing. Yet they, like us, were hoping for so much less than Jesus had come to give. We had hoped for incremental improvements to our lives, but Jesus came to give you a new life in his new kingdom. That doesn't mean the life you now lead doesn't matter. Doesn't mean that it's of no consequence when hopes are disappointed doesn't mean you are foolish to hope in temporary things, but it does mean that your life is of much greater value than any of these temporary hopes, any of these measurements that our world can come up with. Your life is of much greater value than can be measured by your bank account or your scorecard or your ACT score, or the attendance at your wedding or graduation or birthday party, it's of much greater value than any of those things that are causing us so much fear and disappointment at this time. Because your life is one that Jesus gave his for. Your life is worth everything to him because he gave everything for it. And even when he's hard to see, even when you wonder about his presence, even when despair is threatening to consume, he still holds you close. He still finds you out on the road. He still knows you as one of his own. Whatever darkness this world throws at you, it has already thrown at Jesus and he has defeated it, not for himself, but for you. One day you too will say of Jesus, we had hoped in him. But you won't say it because your hope has been disappointed. You will say it because your hope has been fulfilled. Your faith has become sight. When nothing else remains, Jesus does. He cannot be defeated by the darkness and because you belong to him, neither can you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of the day is, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
Now let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you again this week to take some time each day and just reach out to a fellow member of the congregation or a neighbor uh, just to check in and say hello and see how they're doing and share the peace of the Lord with them as well. Now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the hope that you have planted in us through your Son. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that we might bear witness to that hope that we have in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for your comfort and peace for all those whose hope is wavering or even has disappeared altogether. Comfort your people with the holy and certain hope that you have not forsaken us. And that you hold us close even in the midst of darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, you have made this earth to produce all that we need for life. We pray for your blessings upon all those farmers who are getting out in the fields this week. Grant that this season of planting would be safe and would provide a picture, a glimmer, a glimpse of the hope that we have in you, the hope of renewed life and abundance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we call to mind before you all those in special need, the sick, the dying, the grieving, especially those we name now in our hearts before you. Bind up the wounds of your people and fill them with your peace which passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is, God himself is present. <laughs>